Hey the crafter, I hope you are doing well. I've got a fun little video today and it's going to be all about assembling crochet squares into bags. So you might remember seeing these mini sunburst squares that I've been crocheting recently and I had a ton of scrap yarn that I turned into a magic yarn ball and I whipped a bunch of these out because they're just so cute. So anyways, I needed to turn all these squares into an actual project. So that's what I'm going to share today and I'm going to show three different bag designs that you can assemble from crochet squares. Now I'm using these mini starburst squares but you of course can use any other kind of square and if you use squares that are larger or smaller that's fine too. It just will change the overall dimensions of your bag. So for the first design, let me show you the basic configuration. We're going to start simple and we're going to need six squares for our first bag. And we want to arrange them like such. So we're going to have two columns, each with three squares in their columns. And I'm going to use this bright orange yarn to connect them just because I'm going for that funky eclectic coloration. And if you're not sure how to join these together, I've got a video that breaks down several different methods. But what I'm first going to do is I'm going to seam along here, here, and here, and join these six squares together in this configuration. All right, so I have finished joining my six squares together and the method I used for joining was slip stitching in the back loops only. And one other thing I wanna mention is when I joined these, I first slip stitched all the way along this way and then I slip stitched along these seams and just went all the way across and just had a little bit of crisscrossing of the seams in the corners. Hey guys, editing Amanda interrupting the video here really quick. So this video is focused on the configuration of the bags and I don't show the actual connecting part, but don't worry, I've got some resources for you. So first of all, I have another video that's titled something like seven ways to join crochet squares. That shows seven ways to join crochet squares and it works on any kind of squares, whether you're using the mini sunburst like I am for my bags or a different kind of square. So that'll give you some options. But then I'm also posting a few shorts that are gonna be like a little crash course of how I specifically connect mini sunburst granny squares using the slip stitch and back loops only technique. So I'll be posting part one today and then over the next few days, I'll be posting the rest of the parts. So that'll be another resource and I hope y'all will find it helpful. Anyways, I will link to those in the description and I'll also probably pin a comment to the top of this video with the links to all the shorts as I post them. Okay, let's get back to the bag making video. So our bag is almost seamed together. The last thing we're going to do is take this and fold it in half. And at this point you have the choice to either sew these two sides and make the bag be wider than it is tall and have this be the opening. Or you can sew this side in the bottom and have the bag be taller than it is wide and have this be the opening. Totally up to you, but in my case, I'm going to make my bag wider than it is tall. And I'm going to slip stitch the edges together to make my seams. So I finished seaming the sides of my bag together, I of course have a lot of tail ends to weave in and I need to add handles, but let me take care of those two things and then I'll show you how this adorable bag turns out. And here is how this little bag turns out once the handle is added and all the ends are woven in. Y'all, I just think this is so cute. And another idea I wanna mention with this, if you don't wanna add handles like this, you could also line it with some fabric, add a little zipper on top, and it could be a little makeup pouch. That would be so adorable too. But this is the first bag we can make using crochet squares. For our second bag design, we are going to need 13 squares. So I have all these purple, green, and black ones from a different project that I unraveled, and I'm going to assemble them into a bag. So before I do the big layout, I'm gonna show you how this bag is kind of going to turn out. So you're gonna start with five of these squares on one side, and then on the opposite side will be another five squares. So I'm kind of doubling up here to show both sides of the bag. Then you're going to have three squares left over. And these three squares are gonna get folded in half into a triangular shape. And they're gonna fill in here, fold into a triangle shape, fill in here, and fold into a triangle shape and fold in here. So this is going to be the overall shape of the bag. So now let me spread these out and show you how we need to configure these. All right, so hopefully you can see this all on camera. This is the configuration. So the way it works is we're gonna have two then we're gonna have three, and they're all gonna nestle together, then two, then one, then two, then one, and then two more on the end. So from this side, it's two, three, two, one, two, one, two, and I'm gonna seam 
all of this together. And I'm going to use this matching purple for this bag. All right, so I have connected my squares together. It looks a little something like this. And hopefully now that it's all connected and laying flat, you can see exactly the configuration. So again, it's two, one, two, one, two, three, and two. So now that I have it all connected, it really doesn't look like much, but I'm gonna show you how we turn this into a bag. So I'm gonna flip it over so I have my wrong side facing up. And to go from this to a bag, what I need to do is fold this side over. So it's gonna line up these five with the five on the other side. And then these ones here on the end, we're gonna fold in half. And that's gonna make our bag. So up here will be open and we'll close the sides in. So what that means is I have three sides that I need to sew together. So one, two, three, kind of like a zigzag. And same over here. I need to sew this edge together, this edge together, and this edge together. So I'm gonna sew these together on either side and show you how that turns out. All right, I got a little ahead of myself and I forgot to show you the bag before adding the handles, but here is the bag once I finished sewing those two sides together and also I added handles. These handles use the same method that I used for the orange bag and I will be having a video coming up soon on how to make these handles. There's a little trick to make these handles so they're nice and sturdy and don't stretch out. But I just think this bag turned out so cute. This yarn was from a pillow cover that I never ended up using, so I'm glad I was able to repurpose the yarn. And I also think this is just a fun and very practical design for a tote bag. For our third and final bag design, we are going to need 24 squares. Now, technically you can adjust this and make this a little different if you want because the body of the bag is just a rectangle, but I'm gonna show this configuration and you can adjust it if you want. And for this bag design, we're going to make, I've heard this called a Japanese knot bag. I don't really know if that's actually what it is or if that's just the name that was given to it. But anyways, it's a bag where the handles are two different sizes and instead of holding both handles, you pull the bigger handle through the smaller handle and hold on to just the larger handle. So we're going to use these squares to configure a bag like that. Let me show you how that's going to look. The two sides of my bag are going to be three by three. So we're gonna have nine squares for each side of my bag. So I have nine, three rows of three. That's the first side of the bag. Attached to it is gonna be another three by three. So again, nine squares to be the second side of the bag. So what I've got here, it's a little hard to see on camera, is I have six by three, and we'll fold it right here, and each side will be three by three. So that's the body of the bag, and then if we come to one end, we're going to attach the handle. And the way we attach the handle is we're going to have two on one side and four on the other. So I'm popping up with the little schematics so you can see it a little better since all the squares don't fit in camera. But I'm going to assemble all that together. And something I haven't really mentioned is make sure before you start assembling them that you play around with the arrangement of your squares, especially if they're different colors. Mine are all kinds of crazy colors, so I've definitely been playing around and trying to make it look appealing. You know, not put too many of the same ones beside each other. But anyways, this is the configuration for this bag. We're gonna start by sewing this together and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so if we take a look at the bag here, I've got the panel sewn together. So we have this big, long section here. And then at the top end, we have these kind of long straps. We have two on this side, four on this side. So now what we need to do is we need to fold it in half and attach the handle. So let me flip this over. And these nine are one side of my bag. So I'm gonna take this piece and just fold it in half like that. So we'll need to seam the two sides. And then for the handles, they're gonna get folded over and they're gonna attach right here and right here. And you might notice the handles are different lengths, that's intentional. So to do this in only two seams, I'm gonna first seam up this side and then when I get to the top right here, I'll immediately go over and connect that first handle. And then same idea on the opposite side. I'll first go from the corner on up the side, seam that, and then instead of detaching, I will just turn and connect this end of the handle to this front panel right along here. So let me take care of that and then I'll show you how it turns out. And here's our final bag made from crochet squares now that I've sewn it all together and woven in the ends. It's the little Japanese knot bag. And I think this one turned out so cute too. I might be a little biased, but I just love the patchworkness to all of these different bags that we've made. And here you can see how it works with the handles being different sizes. 
I just think it's such a neat little touch for a bag and really adds some character. And this one is super easy to customize the size of the bag. You can use more squares to make the body of the bag bigger or wider or deeper or however you want to shape it. So it's very versatile and customizable. But anyways, these are the three bags that we've assembled using crochet squares. I hope you guys enjoy these ideas and be sure to let me know in the comments which design is your favorite. I hope you all have fun making these. Happy crafting!